Small, relatively inexpensive satellites referred to as CubeSats will provide a variety of technology demonstrations on the space station using NanoRacks. NanoRacks house experiments, and we recently spoke with the operations manager and payload developer with NanoRacks to find out more about these tiny inventions. All right, Rob, the logo is Space for Everyone. What does that mean? It's a NanoRack. Okay, well, what a NanoRack is, is a cube or we can do a double cube or a triple cube or a quadruple cube. We have a couple platforms on the International Space Station that include USB ports that you can plug these into. So what you do is you fit your experiment inside this cube that connect to the controller card into the cube and then we plug it into the platform on the ISS. Now, some people don't want to fit their experiment inside the cubes. They want to fly something else. So we have some facilities such as this uh, microscope. We have one just like this on board that the crew plugs into one of the laptops, points it on something interesting. Nano, tiny, right? Yes. So space is limited on yes. the space station. So it's perfect for folks to get their experiments to fit into something like this. Yes, I mean, this is a 10 by 10 by 10 centimeter cube. And so for the opportunity to fly, uh, we are v relatively inexpensive and we do things very fast from concept to flight in nine months. So to take advantage of the opportunity, a lot of research developers are willing to downscale their experiment so that it will fit inside our, our structure rather than trying to fit the spacecraft around the experiment. And a unique concept as well is you have educators and researchers all over putting yes. their experiments in here, but you also have educators building these nanoracks. Yes, we've uh, got several programs that uh, involve schools from around the world. One of our most uh, successful programs involves uh, uh, Valley Christian High School in uh, San Jose, California, has flown four of these boxes so far that have split a nanorack into four sub-modules or mini-labs. And they fit a different experiment in each of these mini-labs with a camera and I've been able to pull down real-time pictures from each of the mini labs. What types of experiments will go into something like that? What, what are they We've like? had bacterial growth experiments, uh, ferrofluid experiments, uh, they're about to fly up a CO2 sensor that they'd like to test, and uh, plant growth seedlings, and uh, um, aluminum uh, bronzing type experiments. So it really works with whatever can fit inside the tube, inside the cube, and fits within NASA safety rules. Why is this so unique for NASA and the space station to have this capability? Well, we are a private company and we uh, do not have a, our selection process is who is ready to fly and um, who is able to uh, provide us the funding to fly their experiment. And we do things very, very quickly. We don't require a long process to decide who's more worthy than anybody else. And we also provide a simple structure, structure that researchers can work within. And uh, fortunately, we have a close partnership with NASA so that uh, we're constantly working with NASA, making sure that the suggested experiments will fall within the safety requirements. I'm a former safety person myself, <laughs> so that does help. That does help. And uh, NASA helps us with development of the procedures. We do the crew training for them. And, uh, uh, and uh, so this gives a gateway to the space station that was not always already there. Not bad for a company that started out in someone's garage, then moved to a U-Haul, and now have a larger, very busy production facility.